and welcome along to a new episode of Two Chaps, where today I'm with Rich. Hello, Rich. Greetings. Now, the purpose of these videos is to make sure that we review cars that anybody could buy, not just brand new cars where you have to get finance and APR and all that rubbish that comes along with it, but cars that actually, where you get a lot for your money. And today is no exception. Today, we're looking at Rich's car, which is a Ford Focus. Tell us a little bit about it. It's a two litre, naturally aspirated, 16-valve uh, VTEC engine. Four-cylinder. Four-cylinder. Um, it's done about 85,000 miles, and it's served me very well. So um, let's first of all talk about, now this comes from, this is Ford's first new venture after the Escort. Indeed, this, this is the direct replacement for the Escort, this shape. Uh, 1998, Ford released this thing, and it took the motoring world by storm. Yeah, I mean, it's a very different design compared to the Escort. If you think about the generations of Escorts there's been, you know, uh, unanimous with motorsport, rallying and all that kind of stuff, a lot of pedigree there. Absolutely. I mean, I learned to drive in a, a Mark III Escort. Right. And the comparison between getting into one of these and getting into an Escort is, is unbelievable. This feels like a modern car by standards we know today. The Escort was incredibly simple, incredibly basic. Um, it, was a, it was a tin box in comparison. So um, let's have a look at the styling. I mean, right from the off, you get these wonderful, I mean, which Ford had never really done until this range of cars. This sweeping lines across the bonnet, uh, across the headlamps. I mean, completely different to the Escort. Absolutely. I mean, we take it for granted because every car manufacturer has, has borrowed from this shape in the cars that we see on the road today. But when this came out, there was nothing that looks like this at all. Um, and it literally overnight revolutionized the way we thought about car shapes. This car for me, from a slightly selfish point of view, but it represented a time where cars had just taken on that next step in engineering. I mean, oh, very much the so, years, yeah. this was sort of late 90s, so uh, it was very popular at the time that the British Touring Car Championship, and you had Peugeot and Honda and uh, BMW and um, Nissan, all with these, in fact, the two litre petrol engines were some of the most popular made by those manufacturers. Absolutely. The higher revving, the, the performance driven, um, and it really does, I mean, this car kind of symbolizes that next step, doesn't it? Oh, really? very much so. We've talked about the styling. We've talked about the engine, the performance. What kind of problems have you had with the car over those 13, 14 years? Very little. Um, most of the problems have been general wear and tear. Um, both front springs have snapped, which I've had to replace. Again, you know, the car was 12 years old at the time, so it's literally just general wear and tear. Um, other than that, I've had to change the wheels because I destroyed the alloys on the curbs. Bristol curbs. Bristol curbs are killers. Okay, so. We've sung its praises, we've highlighted a few of its problems. I think it's time now, I mean, we've got some country lanes around here. Should we take it for a spin? Let's take it for a drive. Let's go for it. First impressions for me, I mean, this isn't my car, so uh, I've got to tell you, Rich. Tell me, Andy. It's comfortable. It is a comfortable car. What, already what I'm getting is how precise it feels on the road. Tell us, what's it like to drive? It's, it's a really fun car to drive. We're going down these B roads and the steering is so responsive. Uh, you know, millimetre turn on the wheel, millimetre turn on the front wheels. It's, it's just a driver's car. It, it's such fun. So we've got a, a manual transmission in this car. Uh, Five-speed five five speed manual. Five-speed manual, there you go. Do you feel the need to reach for a sixth at times, or is it is it the rev range quite nice across the gears? The rev range is really good. Um, you get out of first and second and third, in fact, really quick. Um, and you spend most of your time sat in fourth and fifth, really. Just going through the chicane here. The aircon's just kicking in, so I'm... Cool as a cucumber. Alpine fresh whilst going through the chicane. My dad, that aircon is as old as the car and I've never had it charged and it's still working beautifully. How fantastic. Your vehicle is blessed. It's a balmy 21 degrees outside as well, so. <laughs> the optional trip computer telling you that. Yes, so that's an option. It's an option. What's there if you don't have the, if the option? Uh, a space, I think. I just think just a blank. It's, it's a hole, literally a hole. I think that whole unit is just, just like a, a cubby hole. hole. Yeah. Nice. For loose change and useful things like that. So this car is nearly 20 years old. It was born in, the original car was 1998. 98 was the release, release of, of the it. Mark I. And I'm not sure why you're turning here, but I love it. I like the name of the road, Vimpenny's We were worried, this could be another shooting location. 
Oh, interesting. Because I don't actually know what's down here. Well, let's find out. Yeah. I'm waiting for the ding, 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 ding. <laughs> one of the things we talked about earlier when we were looking from outside the car is just how fantastic the styling was for the exterior. It was worlds apart from where the Escort was, and Ford really nailed it. Um, took the world by storm, didn't it? It really did. It, you know, it was the first time anybody had seen a car like this in this price range. Mm. Um, but sadly, and I don't mean this, it's not it's just as my personal taste, you come into the inside of the car, and whilst there are a lot of positives to take out from it, um, there are a few negatives. Ford didn't really massively nail the interior. They really didn't, and it's a real shame. I mean, everything works, everything's where you expect it to be, it's functional, you know, it's stood up to the test of time very well. But the thing that's always really disappointed me about it is, it's, it's such a special car when you're driving it. Uh, the way it handles and the stiffness of the chassis and the responsiveness and the, the pickup of the engine. And the interior just lets it down. It doesn't make you feel the car's as special as it actually is. You know, um, I mean, this one is one of the better interiors as well because it, a lot of them came out with fake wood kind of effect on the dash. Which, um, unless you do it half decently, just doesn't... Really doesn't work. No. So what we're saying is, essentially, is the... The car is underselling itself because the chassis is amazing, the engine's amazing, um, and the interior, sort of, if you get in, you feel you want to drive the car, but the interior lets it down because actually the drive is good. Yeah, the, the interior just it doesn't feel as special as the car actually is. I think that's the problem with it. And I love the armrest. Oh, the armrest is fantastic. You know, that's, a, that's even with today's standards, that's, that's, a, that's and, an add on. And it's ratcheted. So you can adjust. So you can adjust it. That breaks a lot on cars, you know. It stays where you put it. And the 16 years on, that still works as it did when I bought it. See, there we go. This particular sort of plastic isn't that nice. I mean, it's almost trying to be leather. Yeah, it's kind of that. But it's molded plastic. Faux, faux leather stuff. I mean, it's it's not the worst quality in the world. Um, to be honest, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to put your finger on. I, I just don't think Fords have ever really nailed interiors. No. You know? No, they've... Um, it's not, not inspiring, I think the word is. No, that's the thing, that is the thing. You know. But then, you know, look at the price point of the car, so maybe you're expecting too much. At the yeah. end of the day, I'd rather have a car that drives this well and lasts this long with this few problems. So, first impressions for me, um, sitting in the car, is that considering that this car is, is, is nudging the... Uh, oh, it's going on for 16 years. 16 years old, okay. And you're gonna be, if you're looking at purchasing one of these, you know, it could be anywhere from 200 for almost perhaps a project non-runner to, you know, what are we saying, 1,000, 1,200 quid? Uh, I'd probably, if I was to put this on the market tomorrow, I'd ask 1,200 purely because it's it's a pretty low mileage for the age. And 84, it, it, yeah. And it is in pretty good condition. So, um, I, mean, I would probably take a grand, I'd, yeah, actually I'd probably take 900 quid if somebody offered me 900 quid for it. So that, that's a lot of car for your money. That's I mean, a hell of a lot of car for your money. As a first impression, you know, I sit in here and I think what I own at the moment and what I drive, uh, which is a car that's uh, three years old, um, and the cabin noise, which is something I'm a massive stickler about, you know, we both work in sound, and if there's rattles or, or uh, audio anomalies, we'll say, um, they can really grate and they can really get on your nerves. And one thing I'm noticing about in here, it helps the fact it's a petrol, not a diesel is the cabin noise is quite, you know, it's solid. It, it is. There's, there's, there's no, there's know, nothing loose. If, uh, you know, a car that is as old as it is, there is nothing rattled, there's no rattles, there's no squeaks, there's no, you know, the fixtures and fittings have held together very well indeed. Mm. Um, you know, so, I mean, and it pulls okay. It does forget it in the right gear. The outside obviously had the alloys that were changed. Inside... I'm guessing this car didn't come with a CD player, or did it? It came with a multi-changer, actually. And, it came um, with a multi-changer, but this isn't the original? No, this is this I replaced because the multi-changer started eating CDs. Dangerous um, game. Yeah, and it, it would th I, I loved the multi-changer unit itself because it was just one unit. You didn't have a cartridge in the boot or anything. You just fed your CDs into the unit, and it stacked them. Right. Um, but unfortunately, it, the mechanism did screw up, and it did kind of refused to eject CDs. So gotcha. I ended up having to take... And then I lived with it for a bit, and then the radio started playing up. Um, so I took it out and swapped it for this Alpine one. 
Um, and the reason I went for the Alpine was because it was compatible with the uh, steering wheel controls. Oh, the store. For the audio system. Right, gotcha, gotcha. Um, but other than that, it's completely standard? Completely standard, haven't changed a thing. And the Millennium Falcon keyring? Uh, that, yeah, that is an addition. That's an addition. I will add. Ford didn't supply that to you? Ford didn't supply that, no. Okay, slight hint to the slightly geeky side um, there. So, Andy, yes. how, have you, how have you enjoyed your day with the Focus? Uh, it's been enlightening. Mm. I would say, uh, to summarise, this car for me, uh, I had no preconceived ideas. You know, she's getting a bit old now. Considering you can pick one of these up for under £1,000, if you know what to look for, mm -hmm. which is uh, the blower. The blower. Making sure that that's operating and doesn't, you know, misbehave. Uh, check your shocks, your springs, front and rear. Just listen for any knocking. Listen for uh, handling as well will probably be off. Uh, absolutely, yep. Yeah. Um, Service history, obviously. An absolute must. Um, really, the mileage, as Richard said, the engines are solid. So uh, as long as it drives right, sounds right, feels right. Has got the paperwork to back up its history. Then I think it's a solid choice. Um, uh, for the money, you can't go wrong. You can't can go you? wrong. You know, so it should definitely be, in my opinion, be on your list of something to, to, to check out. You know, and, and go for the five door if you can, because it's practical and uh, comfortable and still looks stylish from the outside. I think so. So, there you go. Top tip there. Top tip. Feel free to subscribe. We're going to be doing a lot more videos. Um, we're about to go and do a smart car, I believe. I think so. Which, for a bit of fun, um, which is actually not our car at all, is it? No, we've borrowed that one. We're borrowing that one. So, uh, we've got no history or anything about the car. We're just going to get in and see what it's like uh, for a bit of fun. Um, and as the sun's come out, we might even put the top down. We'll see. Um, but anyway, um, do subscribe and uh, follow us on Instagram and on Twitter. Um, and uh, if you've got any questions, just holler at us, you know? Uh, we, we, we're not going to bite. Well, maybe. He might, but look at him. He's not once taken his sunglasses off. I mean, that says a lot about a guy. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, enjoy, enjoy. We hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.